Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Oscar, and today I'll be talking about uh, making new cameras, uh, the challenges and possibilities that we're facing as a community. So, um, as we know, the camera is mainly uh, three pieces, so our film, lens, and shutter. Um, the, the two pieces that are properly of the camera are the lens and shutter, and so lenses, we'll, have, we'll probably have a lot of them, and we still have them, and we can adapt them to new um, cameras, but the shutters are an issue that we're having right now. Um, so what's the problem with the shutters? So the problem is that the shutters are slowly dying. Um, the spare parts to repair them, uh, the supply for them is dwindling. Um, so as uh, demand for cameras increased, as the community grows, um, uh, the, the, the amount of cameras that work uh, has you know, gone down because the old cameras that maybe were working uh, slowly die off and making a new camera is still not economically viable. Um, the film market is really interlinked and volatile. We saw that, so for example, when Tetanol had issues, um, there was a big scare in the community whether we were gonna lose some, some types of processing, we are gonna lose E6 um, or other chemicals. Um, and the last problem is that designing shutter takes actually a lot of time. Um, so the general challenges we're facing are that uh, shutters require quite tight tolerances uh, it requires skilled technicians to assemble and build them, and they're quite costly, um, which is a problem where uh, new cameras, well, cameras right now are really inexpensive, especially compared to what they were worth back in the day, and so it might not be worth making new ones for some companies. So there's two main types of shutters. They're mechanical shutters, um, first off, and these are more difficult to manufacture because they have these tiny gears, and so they require um, watchmakers to craftsmen to design and produce the pieces. And um, this is a, a problem where um, it, it makes it really hard to manufacture them because uh, the people who traditionally made these pieces, there are fewer and fewer of them out there nowadays. Um, but it doesn't have the benefit that they can command a higher price um, as a result. Um, which might make them viable in some sections of the market. Um, and also, well, the, the benefit we have with them right now is that they can usually be serviced for a very long time if spare parts are available, because people, uh, it's easier to understand how they work than it is for um, electronic shutters. So yeah, then we get to, well, electrical shutters, electronic shutters, they are nowadays easier to make in large quantities because we, see, we can send production off to China and to other places they can make these quite cheaply and easily, but um, repairing them is a lot more trouble. It requires a lot more electrical literacy, so it's to understand what, what these pieces do, and especially nowadays where components become smaller, it becomes harder and harder to repair these, um, for, even for trained technicians to understand what these pieces do. You have usually you replace and swap parts. Um, but the benefit with them in the, for the user is that they can achieve higher speeds than their mechanical counterparts. So um, there's two real types of shutters we usually talk about. So one of them is the focal plane shutter. Here's an example of one uh, that has an old copal shutter with electronical contacts. And the other sh type of shutter is a central shutter, often referred to as a copal or a compo shutter because those are the brands that made them. Um, these have different specs and also different purposes. So the focal plane shutters are more commonly found or mostly found in uh, 135 and 120 format um, cameras, so that's 35 millimeter film and medium format, and they have slightly different specs. So if we were to make these shutters new, you would need at least one 1,000th of a second, and of course the film gate to be the appropriate size for the 35 mm shutters. For medium format, people usually ex accept a tiny bit slower speeds because it is bigger, and so the camera has slower, uh, slower max apertures, and so that works out. Um, the issue with both of these is that the speed tolerance is uh, quite tight. Um, now, the central shutters is used a lot for compacts, as well as for the larger formats. So the medium format, 4x5, goes up to 8x10, and the ultra-large format. Um, the compacts are easier in this way because they might only require one or two speeds. They usually use flash. And so we can get away with, um, with other, uh, other shutters and other possibilities, maybe. 
whereas the medium format and 4x5, they require at least 1 500th. Uh, they ha have more specs on how thick the shutter can be and what fit it has to have. Um, and then it says cordless because there are some there are some new shutters available out there. For example, there's the, Ron uh, uh, the Rollerstock E shutter, but that only goes up to 1 one twentieth of a second and needs a computer to run, which makes the whole shutter pretty much useless for most photographers. It's really a studio thing and nothing else. Um, and so these have different economics as well. So compact cameras have the benefit of making up the vast majority of all film um, that is used, or at least 35 millimeter in general, and the compact cameras would serve that market. Um, and so for these, uh, there may even be options in other industries um, to, to pull shutter ideas or shutter parts from other industries that could make these parts because they're usually small. And so there's probably other industries that use them. There's also some available on, on the internet, uh, but these are often unreliable sources, so it's not great. Um, but they do require, to make new compact cameras, we will require new lenses to be made because you can't really fit old lenses on these compact cameras since the shutter is so small. Uh, the glass usually needs to be small as well. Um, but it has the benefit of being a growing, growing market with dying cameras, which means that there's an opportunity for somebody to step in and actually make these cameras. Um, but, uh, and so any of the big players in film could potentially step into this market to help out their own production. So Kodak or Fuji, uh, anybody making film actually has a, uh, there's a big benefit for them to step into this market and help it out. Um, the only problem uh, for maybe smaller players that want to jump in this market is that the market seems volatile, at least from the outside, and that makes it hard to get an investment to, to get funding to make these shutters. Now, for the rest, um, the central shutter unit is quite costly. And so it can cost at least maybe $300 to make or to manufacture. Um, it requires a lot of R&D time. So making these shutters is not something that, that can happen overnight. Um, and even with, even with rising prices, these shutters nowadays cost so much less than they used to do before that it's, um, it might never even become profitable. And so here's sort of where the call to action is for the community. Um, it will require a lot of people, with passionate people, and willing to invest time and money to sort of invent new solutions for this. Um, the problem is, so for the market, for the larger formats, for those markets, the building new cameras becomes um, difficult because yeah, it takes time. And by the time that, um, that cameras are starting to dwindle off and die, um, people might not be willing to pay, pay that premium for new cameras and new shutters. Um, and so that's gonna make it difficult for the future. But to end on a more positive note, so what are the possibilities right now and starting points we can go at? So we have the benefit of having almost a century's worth of cameras to look at. And a lot of them, we know which ones survive the test of times. We, we know which design is good and which design will work for a long time. And so, usually the patents for these have actually gone out. So we can look into the service manuals, we can open up old bodies and check how they're made and try to remake those designs. Some of them might be too complicated, some of them might cost too much to make at a smaller scale. But nowadays there are a lot more options of manufacturing things smaller scale than they were before. We have to remember that most of these cameras, the last ones were made at least uh, 20 years ago. And so nowadays there's a lot more possibilities that we have in terms of manufacturing. So that's sort of the end of my presentation. Um, if you want to uh, reach out to me or continue the conversation, you can reach out to me on at Panomicron on Instagram or um, just send me an email at oscar at panomicron.com. So are there any questions from the live? Maybe people are typing. Uh, my main question is uh, what, what would you see as that? Like, is it an electrical or a fully mechanical thing that would be uh, viable? So the, the mechanical shutter is well very nice. Um, I think that in, I mean, the times we are right now, making comp electrical components has become a lot cheaper and a lot easier for mass production. So I think that the shutter that 
um, is most viable, at least, and is most probable we can make is electrical. Um, I know a lot of people aren't a fan of the electronics because they tend to die out or um, have issues, but those cameras are at least you know, 25 to 30 years old. Um, and so modern electronics should survive at least for a couple more years. And uh, if you could ask for any like, uh, skill set guy whatsoever to contact you and uh, join this conversation, what, what would you be looking for? Well, um, I, I'd most be interested in if, any, if anybody who is an electrical engineer or uh, knows a lot about that type of electronics that could help um, help us or help me uh, reverse engineer some of the old shutters um, just to, to have an idea of how they worked, uh, that would be great. And that would be a good start for, um, for producing, well, for starting a design to produce new shutters. There's some questions here. Yes. Uh, are you looking for designs or asking if people have suggestions for what designs you should uh, mock? Um, well, we're, I mean, I'd say I'm mostly looking for people who are interested in, in coming up with a, um, a new design um, that's based off of old ones. So if, if anybody knows a really, really good design um, that seems to be foolproof and that seems to be really easy to replicate, that'd be great. Um, yeah. And uh, another question, what is the ask for the community? Is it uh, funding or people? Design things the I mean the ask from the community is to is to find people mostly I think the the there's no point in in seeking funding right now because there's no plan for a shutter what we need to do is to find uh, to reverse engineer some old shutters and find a design that that we could that's feasible and that we can build nowadays